from uh, York University talking about what is monoidal topology. So take it away, Walter, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Thank you for the kind invitation to speak. Uh, in our initial communication, you had suggested that I talk about uh, monoidal topology, and that's what I'm going to do. So um, I spent uh, a couple of slides on this strange term uh, before uh, going back all the way to Hausdorff's book of 1914 and uh, point to some interesting remarks that he makes. Uh, then I spent some time to uh, explain the syntax for this uh, monad quantal enriched uh, approach. Um, and well, in the middle of the talk, uh, talk about uh, an injunction that I consider quite fundamental in the whole theory. Um, then I uh, have uh, um, some slides on particular topological properties that I think come naturally out of this description and the syntax uh, that we provide. All this is based on ultrafilter convergence. So somehow I feel obliged to reconcile this with uh, traditional uh, geometric uh, consideration of spaces in terms of neighborhoods or closure operations. And uh, I'm not sure I will have time to really get into the comparison with an internal category approach that goes back to Boroni. Uh, if I'm running out of time, then I have to uh, refer you to my CT talk uh, at the beginning of uh, September. All right, so let's uh, start. We all know that mono it, uh, monoids uh, are around in algebra, just based on the fact that we have a notion of monoid in a monoidal category, and that uh, leads to all sorts of interesting algebraic structures and also categorical structures like monads themselves, and after all, categories. So here are side by side uh, two descriptions of a category, uh, one in terms of a set X of objects and a set uh, C of arrows with a domain function and a codomain function and a structure uh, given um, M that uh, defines the composition on composable pairs and the insertion of identities. And if you take this uh, pair DC giving us a function into X cross X, of course, that is also equivalently a function defined on X cross X with values in set, which gives us the home approach. Um, and um, in some sense, the left-hand side lends itself to the internal category approach, the right-hand side uh, uh, leads to enriched categories. And uh, if you take the case that uh, the home function just has two values, then the left-hand side becomes a relation on the set X. And the existence of the composition and the identities, these are now properties and uh, you can express them as reflexivity and transitivity. Um, you know, in fancy terms, you could talk about a monoid C in the, uh, in the category of relations on X with a monoidal structure given by relational composition. Or you could say, all right, I really have a Lux Eilenberg Moore algebra with, with respect to the identity monad in the category of relations, of sets and relations. All right, so why do I mention Hausdorff? Uh, a while ago, uh, Dirk Hofmann mentioned an interesting uh, piece in Hausdorff's book. Uh, if you haven't Hausdorff, uh, ever opened Hausdorff's book of 1914, um, you have to 
remember that uh, he first talks in six or seven chapters just about ordered sets. And uh, then he finally starts uh, after quite a while, after 200 pages or so, uh, to talk about uh, what he aims for, namely topologies. And he talks about uh, notions of distance, of convergence and neighborhoods. And he says, which of the three fundamental notions, distance, limit, neighborhood one wants to choose as a basis of consideration is to a certain degree a matter of taste. Accordingly, the distance theory seems to be the most special one, the limit theory, the most general one. On the other hand, the notion of limit brings immediately a connection with countability, with sequences of elements into the theory, which the neighborhood theory for goals. So he is certainly right, distance is the most special one. Uh, limit theory, he has a clear sense that um, limit theory for sequences is not enough. And that is why he opts for, uh, for his neighborhood approach. And uh, how does he think of order of metric of convergence of neighborhood systems. So he thinks of an order as a function into a three element set uh, since he, and it is given by um, less and bigger and equal. Um, these are total orders that he considers. When he considers partial orders, he has an additional symbol for known comparability. Of course, metrics are functions real valued and um, I will now uh, try to convince you that how he thinks about convergence as relations between sequences and points and neighborhood systems as uh, relations between subsets and points. Because he says, now there is no obstacle to generalizing this point of view. And we could think that there be defined an arbitrary function of pairs of a set so that uh, for a pair of elements we are in a set that be assigned a certain element in a second set M. And in even further generalization, we could uh, consider a function of triples of elements, of sequences of elements, of complexes or families of elements, of subsets of M and the like. So, this is how he thinks of topologies of spatial structures as generalization, generalizations of orders. Uh, he makes a sort of step back and says, of course, if kept very general theory of this type could cause uh, 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 considerable complications and provide little positive outcome. Um, so, we have our set, house of set M of points, and then the target set N, where we have sort of the syntactical structure in there. Uh, now, there are approaches where people have kept the set N floating with M, changing with M. We will keep it fixed, like in a metric uh, where we have uh, the real numbers, for instance. The question is, what kind of structure do we want to put on this? Now, the examples one has in mind uh, tell us what could be appropriate in terms of pre-ordered sets. You have just the, the, the two chain, which is log logical structure that uh, suffices to, to express uh, reflexive and transitive relations. If you have Loviet type metric spaces, you take the real numbers and you sort of invert uh, the natural order. Um, and uh, then you have the axiom that uh, self distances are zero and you have the triangle inequality. You need the uh, addition as monoidal structure on this. Now, if you take topological spaces and you replace uh, sequences by ultra filters, um, then uh, you have um, two axioms. 
that would say that a fixed ultra filter converges to that point X and a more complicated axiom expressing transitivity that it will involve a big ultra filter on the set of ultra filters on X converging to an ultra filter Y on X that converging to Z will allow you to say that some kind of diagonal ultra filter on X will then converge to Z. I will come back to this axioms, but the main point here is that we have a relation between ultra filters and points with two natural axioms. So we opt now for host of set N to take a quantile that we call V, like in enriched category theory, it comes with a monoidal structure. So we really have a commutative monoid in the symmetric monoidal clause category of uh, complete lattices and soup preserving maps. And uh, some of the main examples we have already seen the two chain. Um, uh, we have seen the uh, no negative extended real half line. We could take any frame uh, and take as a monoidal structure the Cartesian, Cartesian structure. Um, as another example, we could take the power set of a commutative monoid and uh, multiply or take the tensor, tensor of two subsets in the usual fashion. I mentioned this example only to say that we don't assume that the um, tensor neutral element is the top element of the quantile. In this case, you see it is actually an atom. Commutativity is not an issue. Everything would go without commutativity, but uh, there are not too many interesting examples yet. Uh, so I, I assume both for the quantile uh, or for my quantile commutativity, then I don't have to concentrate in which order I write uh, the tensor. Here's another interesting, more involved quantile, the quantile of so-called distance distribution functions, which are sort of functions from the Lovier interval into the unit interval, but the unit interval we order in the usual fa fashion with multiplication and they have a kind of left continuity property. There is a obvious tensor product and the tensor neutral uh, step function. The um, original intervals embed nicely as quantiles into this. Uh, the embeddings give you certain step functions and the point of this, these embeddings is that every uh, distance distribution function is a soup of a sort of combination, tensor combination of these step functions. And the categorical point of this is that this is really a presentation of delta as a co-product of these two quantiles, or since they are isomorphic <laughs> via uh, exponential or logarithm uh, of two copies of, of them. All right. so. Our syntax is there with this quantile and we can talk about uh, V valued relation. We can compose them. We can uh, formally invert them. We can think of every function from X to Y via its V graph uh, as uh, such, a, uh, such a V relation uh, and a V category in the usual sense, it's just a set with such um, a v-valued relation that is reflexive and transitive. And uh, a v-functor is just a monotone, a v-monotone function. And these formulas uh, can be recorded shortly as on the right-hand side. All right, so of course, set itself is a V category, pre-order sets is a V category, metric spaces, 
your via metric spaces is a V category. Uh, if you take uh, this quantile to, to the M that I mentioned, and uh, um, you take this st structure and carry it, then you could say, okay, it's a set with a family of relations indexed by the monoid that is reflexive and transitive in this way. Similarly, if you take uh, a delta category, uh, by currying, you can describe the structure as a family of uh, probability functions uh, uh, indexed by um, the uh, non-negative uh, real line. And you think of P alpha XY as the probability of the distance between X and Y, where you have a distant, a random distance uh, uh, function. And there are two, uh, the two axioms, the reflexivity coming in two parts here and uh, the uh, transitivity expresses itself like this. Okay, um, now, when it comes to topological spaces, of course, uh, the thing is, is more complicated uh, just because it's a relation from UX and X. And I have uh, so far uh, not talked about the difficulty that you not only need a relation from an ultra, uh, that involves an ultra filter and a point, but also an ultra filter on the set of ultra filters and ultra filters. So how do you get this from that? So um, that challenge was met a long time ago, 1971 by Michael Barr, by saying, look, uh, a relation from X to Y is just a span and a span, I can apply my functor U, the ultra filter functor to it, and uh, then tabulate it afterwards to get the extended relation. And that's exactly what one does. So that led us to considering just a set monad equipped with what we call a lax extension to the category of V relations. Uh, that is, the T hat is a lax two functor that coincides with T on objects, and it potentially extends the graph of T of a function in two ways. And uh, when you look at the monad multiplication and monad unit vis-a-vis -vis T hat, they become oblux natural transformations. And you can ask yourself, well, is this a natural set of requirements? Yeah, it is rather natural because what you can do is you can encode the quantile V into its pre sheaf monad PV. So then you have two set monads, the given set monad T and the set monad PV. And having such a lax extension that satisfies these uh, three bullets is equivalent to saying we need a monotone lax distributive loss between these two monads. Um, so then, then you say what the models are. So a TV category or a monad quantile in each category is a set X of objects with a V relation from TX to X satisfying reflexivity and transitivity and TV functors are sort of monotone functions. Um, and uh, the axioms that I have written down are really Lux, Eilenberg, Moore category, um, Lux, Eilenberg, Moore category, um, Lux, Eilenberg, Moore missing the word, Lux-Allenberg, more conditions uh, 
uh, that uh, are expressed by these familiar diagrams. And of course, this has a, has a relational um, presentation. Um, so here you have to compose relations that goes from go from Tx to X. So how do you do that? You do that, of course, via, yeah, I would say co closely Tx to Y, Ty to Z, you compose it in such a way by formally inverting the monad multiplication. Uh, examples, of course, they include what we had before, the V categories, in the case that uh, your monad is the identity and the extension is identical as well. If you take an easy example, the power set monad, then, um, and, and you extend it in the way indicated, you get uh, closure spaces, so a set is a closure operation that is extensive and satisfies this transitivity axiom, which actually combines idempotency um, with monotonicity. You can take B to B, C, A to see the uh, idempotency. And if you apply this mechanism to the ultrafilter monad with what we call the bar extension of it, then you get precisely the minus bar presentation of topological spaces. You can play this game with more involved quantiles, so in particular with uh, the uh, Lovier quantile. And if you sort of do the same thing here for all there is, since you invert the uh, order in the unit, in, in the um, in the real interval, in the Lovier interval, this becomes soup and inf, oops, sorry. Um, I wanted to go up here, yes. Then um, you get a lax extension. The, um, the axioms now tell you, uh, give you a relation between ultra filters and filters that is numerical. So this is a distance zero and here is a generalized triangle inequality if you read it from right to left. Why it is called up, I come back to this uh, later because these are precisely approached spaces that uh, were introduced in 89 by Lovier, uh, sorry, by Lowen. And I mentioned Lovier because it was Bill who pointed me to these approach spaces as a natural generalization of his uh, metric space concept. Uh, what kind of properties do we get for the category of uh, TV categories? Uh, if you take the object of objects functor going down, so it's just a forgetful functor, it's a faithful Grotendieck vibration and co-vibration and its fibers are complete. Um, equivalently, we could say if I give you a set X and I uh, have functions into a bunch of TV categories, then there is a larger structure on X making all Fi morphisms. So this is like a Cartesian lifting of this uh, family. In particular, now this forgetful functor has both adjoints given by the discrete and codic structures. Um, therefore, they preserve limits and co-limits. In fact, uh, you can lift everything from set to this category and putting the appropriate structures on this. This functor is of course representable and many other things you can sort of lift uh, along this topological functor. It doesn't answer the question, is for instance V a TV category? V is certainly a V category with its internal home, but it's quite a different uh, matter to ask whether it's a TV category. And that sort of takes me to uh, this adjunction that I would like to mention uh, in more detail. 
it uh, took me actually uh, an embarrassing long time to realize that uh, this uh, set monad with the lux extension to v rel allows us to consider t as a monad on v cat as a good monad on v cat uh, by just uh, applying the extension to this v category structure that i called a0 here so once you have this, you have uh, T as a monad on VCAT. And of course you want to then consider its eilenberg moore category. And then you have to ask, how is this related uh, to our TV cat? Well, there, there's a nice relation between the two. So if you have an object on the left-hand side, it, it's a V category with an eilenberg moore structure Xi, and you can just relationally compose the two structures and you get a TV category. Now this functor K always has a left adjoint, but in the case that this Kleisley convolution that I talked about is associative, then this left adjoint has a relatively nice description, which I will analyze a little bit further uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a while. Um, in any case, to a TV category, you have the free structure here, but you put a V category structure on TX that makes the multiplication actually a V functor. Um, you can ask, why do you have to have this? Well, all our examples are uh, actually nice in the sense they, they give you uh, an associative, associative Kleisley convolution, the, the relevant examples. In fact, it is not so easy to find non-associative ones. So we don't worry too much about this and we have criteria for this, but that is the technical detail. Um, and uh, now you see, since V is a V category, once you have a Xi, a good structure Xi on this, you can go to the right hand side and um, uh, make V a TV category, but there's much more to this. It, it's all in this nice paper by Hofmann and the advances um, that actually produces everything out of this um, uh, T structure Xi, including the Lux extension itself. It needs a little bit more of assumptions and so on, but I uh, don't want to talk about this. Dirk has talked in the past quite often. Walter, can I, can I interrupt for a second? Yeah. I just ask a quick question. Could you just give a little intuition on how to think of a TV category or how, some intuition for that? Well, it, it is algebraically just a generalized, oops, here, a generalized Allenberg Moore algebra. But in terms of, say, topology? And in terms of topology, I always have my role model bar here. So you have ultra filter convergence. How do you express topology in terms of ultra filter convergence? The amazing thing is you need only two axioms. And one axiom is the principal filter on X converges to X. And the transitivity is more involved. So it says you have a filter Y converging to Z. And now you have an ultra filter on the set of ultra filters converging to Y, then the diagonal filter converges to Z. So how can you think about this if you just think of sequences? So think of this big X as a sequence of sequences. And every sequence, so let's-, let's A sequence of opens this. or a sequence of points? A sequence of opens, right? No, you have, first of all, replace 
y by a sequence of points converging to z. And now you have a sequence of sequences of points and you write them sort of vertically and every sequence in that sequence has a convergent point. So now you look at the horizontally at the uh, sequence of convergence point. Then you have a sort of um, array, like a, an infinite matrix array of sequences and you take a diagonal and you say that converges to Z as well. Wonderful, thanks. And so is this functor from top to, to the bar construction here, here um, uh, faithful, fully faithful? No, this, this is equivalent. So equivalent. whether you have, if you have a topological space, you have the notion of ultra filter conversions. Great, okay, thanks a lot. If, That's if, I, if I give you axiomatically just an ultra filter convergence relation with these two points, then it is a topological space. Wonderful, thank you very much. Right, and, and why is topological space? You just say a point is in a closure of a set if there is an ultra filter on that set that converges to it. So it, it's just very, very natural. Um, not all people like ultra filters. Some people prefer nets, but computations with ultra filters I find them actually easier uh, than, than with nets. Ultra filters might be less intuitive uh, for some people, but uh, it's, it's, it works better with ultra filters. So this goes back to Manus 1967 on his PhD thesis, uh, uh, a really major milestone uh, that uh, really explains that the category of compact Hausdorff spaces is algebraic. Is, 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 is a piece of algebra, not so much of topology. And then Barr extended it via relations to all topological spaces. Okay, so where were we? Let me go back to my big adjunction. So I had it here. So now the, the context here was that we had our monad that we extended to a monad on VCAT and we, um, we formed the Eisenberg Moore category. So you have VCAT here, you have the Eisenberg Moore category here. Of course, you have a forgetful functor all the way there, and you have the free functor going all the way here. And what I'm saying is that my fundamental adjunction on the left is a factor of this Eisenberg Moore adjunction. And what is the other part? The other part is just given by a lax version of the fact that the monad unit E, um, if I take uh, the graph of it, is, is just like a lax algebraic functor. You can vcat think of this as identity comma vcat. So then there is an algebraic functor uh, that goes in the opposite direction, that is this A sub circle. And it has an adjoint, a left adjoint, A upper circle that is technically described like this. So what does it all mean in our role model bar? So the role model is always ultra filter, monad, and two element quanta. Then the Allenberg moore category that I have here over VCAT. VCAT is pre-ordered sets, TVCAT is top, and the Allenberg Moore category over here becomes ordered compact Hausdorff spaces. This means set with a compact Hausdorff topology and a pre-order, and the pre-order or order is, um, is as a subset of X cross X is closed in this compact Hausdorff topology. And uh, this functor K, what does it do? It takes such a compact space given by X and Xi provided with this order and gives it a new topology that says in that new topology, 
an ultra filter converges to Y if the limit point under the compact Hausdorff topology is less or equal to Y. Uh, what is this here? Well, you go from top to ordered spaces with a specialization order or it's dual if you want. And you go back by, sorry, by the, oops, by the Alexandrov topology. Um, here's a more scary picture, uh, but uh, it is not so bad. So here was our original Eilenberg Moore construction over set. We lifted this to VCAT, we factored it, and in many ways, this sits, the upper line sits over the lower line. The functor here is the forgetful functor. It has a left and a right adjoint given by discrete structure and chaotic structure. But the more important point is that the embedding, the discrete embedding has another left adjoint, which I call pi zero. And this sort of exists on uh, this side too. Um, what does it all mean in our role model? In our role model, it looks like this. And why do I say the most important part here is this junction, which I have put a little bit bigger than the rest, because if you compose it here, then this gives you precisely uh, the embedding of compact household spaces into top with stone check compactification uh, being its left adjoint. Now, there's this ominous uh, proviso X is normal. Uh, this only means that I'm sure that when X is normal and I go this way, then I really take pi zero of the um, of a particular order here to get to compact household spaces. So we express stone check as pi zero uh, of an object over here coming from left. And that works for sure only when X is normal, at least that's uh, what we know so far. Uh, it's a bit mystic, but I, what I say, I'm aware of it, but um, uh, let us go to something easier. So we have our axiomatic description of TV categories. So there's one axiom, a reflexivity axiom, and the transitivity axiom, or if you say Lux algebra, the two Lux algebra axioms. So what happens if I insist on equality. In the case of our role model, model, that means precisely the space has to be T1. If I insist on equality on this, this precisely means core compactness or exponentiality in the category top. This was first realized by Pisani in 1999. Of course, the left-hand side, the axioms, you can express in, uh, in different ways because after all, EX lower zero is left adjoined to EX uh, upper circle. And uh, so there are equi equivalent ways of uh, expressing these axioms through other inequalities like these. But then if you insist, if you would insist on equality there, you would uh, reach different properties on the right hand side. In this case, they wouldn't be very interesting. But these two properties are interesting, in particular, exponentiality. Exponentiality is defined equationally inside this lax environment that we have. And something similar happens uh, when you go to the map level. So here I say you have 
uh, a TV functor uh, think continuous function expressed by this inequality, which really means in, in top right pre preservation of ultra filter convergence. Now you could say, what does it mean if I insist on this inequality being an identity? Then this would mean literally if I have an ultra filter X, I look at its image uh, under the function F and that image converges to Y in order to have this equality, I must have a point X over Y in the fiber of F such that the given ultra filter converges to this point. And this is precisely the ultra filter uh, description of proper maps. This means of stably closed maps, arguably one of the most important maps inside topology, the other being open. But in this ultra filter world, the open maps are just let it theoretically dual to proper because uh, if I take this equivalent description now with the right adjoints of what a TV functor is and I insist on equality, then it means given a point in the domain and an ultra filter in the co-domain that converges to f of x, then I must find, be able to find an ultra filter over y that converges to x. And one can relatively easy show, easily show that this characterizes open maps. So in this world, proper is the, the right dual of open. And it is fairly easy to establish essential properties. In particular, the most important one is stability under products under, of proper maps, which um, is not a piece of cake uh, if you uh, are in the world of neighborhoods or closure, but becomes a two-line calculation uh, in uh, the convergence world. And incidentally, uh, the open maps have a categorically dual map, a uh, dual property, which doesn't follow from the property of proper maps because open is dual to proper in a lattice theoretical sense, not in a categorical sense. Um, I will give you one other incidence of uh, naturally arising topological properties. Uh, they are preceded by this note that uh, we have this adjunction and we could think of what it means that a TV category structure A, which is a TV relation, um, has, has a right adjoint. So you would have to consider two triangular inequalities to have an adjunction between A and A0. And the first one would say, if it is not false, if it is not false that a given ultra filter converges to both X and Y, then the two points have to be equal. That's Hausdorffness. And the second triangular inequality would say, um, given an ultra filter Z, then it is true that there is an X such that Z converges to X. And that's compactness. Every ultra filter converges. So these two properties come very naturally uh, out of this uh, setting. Uh, you could actually now look at the compact objects, the house of objects in the general uh, setting and um, you could reproduce Manes' uh, 1967 uh, description of compact house of spaces as Eilenberg-Moore algebra at a 
lacks uh, at a uh, generalized V level. Um, just very briefly, why it is trivial, for instance, to prove the Tychonoff theorem or even the product stability of proper maps, uh, you would have to show that given an ultra filter Z on the product space and a point, uh, then you have to find a point X uh, to which this ultra filter converges. Well, it is true by assumption that um, if you um, if you look at the projections of that ultra filter in each space XI, they would converge. So you would have a family with the axiom of choice. You, you would have that family. And uh, this was, um, then you have a formula like this, that this is true. You apply complete distributivity and you get your result. Okay. Um, you can mimic, and I will largely skip this because I'm getting close to my time and I haven't done more than 60% of what I plan to do. Um, so I will skip this part completely, uh, but I let you have a glimpse at this part. Walter, uh, yes. since I interrupted you with a five minute question, you could go uh, an extra five minutes. Thank you, thank you. Like so here you, you see again, this functor M that I had. So remember it, it takes a TV category and uh, here's a free algebra TX with a free structure. And then A hat was a V category structure on TX given like this. Now, in the role model, this is an order between ultra filters saying that every closed set in X must also be in Y or uh, equivalently every open set in Y must also be in X. Then I remind you of two notions, topological notions, normality and ex extreme disconnectedness expressed in terms of uh, neighborhoods and open sets and closures. Now, if you express them into, in, with, with this relation, generalized well, specific cases here and here's the generalization, then it looks like this. Normality means giving Given a co-span, you have a span. And extreme disconnectedness means having a span of ultra filters, you can find a co-span as indicated, which is just a formal dualization one is the formal dualization of the other, something you can just not see in the, uh, in the traditional geometric setting. Um, here I have some slides on how to reconcile now the convergence approach uh, with the geometric approach in this TV setting and it can all uh, be done without uh, too much difficulty, just extrapolating from the case V equals two. Topological spaces are special closure spaces that have this finite uh, additivity condition. And here is closure preserving maps are continuous. You can lift all this to the V level by replacing two to V, P is the ordinary power set functor. And then if you look at this at, um, for particular quantiles in particular uh, 
zero infinity, then you get actually Lone's uh, notion of approach space, which is a notion that takes a set together with a function between points and set. So it's an axiomatization, axiomatization of point set distance. Uh, it has these two basic axioms plus the additivity. So one is the closure part, one is the topological part. And um, you get this uh, category of approach spaces in which to embed naturally both top and met and both live in there. If you do play the same game with Delta, then you need quite a few more slides and I spare you this. And um, just to say that you can really do what you uh, do for V equals two at this general level. And um, just to indicate the relation between closure and ultra filter convergence. So if you, if you are given a convergence relation, then you say Y is in the closure of A if there is an ultra filter on A that converges to Y. And conversely, um, um, if you have a closure, then you define convergence by saying uh, the ultra filter X converges to Y if for uh, any set A in the ultra filter, Y belongs to the closure of A. So you say, I, I read to you uh, these abstract formulas all in the, in the language of the role model. But they, they do have a meaning, a good meaning in, uh, in uh, the general context. All right, so the theorem summarizes and reconciles geometric, uh, the ge geometric presentation with the ultra filter presentation. And one very brief word about the alternative uh, that I mentioned right at the beginning that you could also take instead of the enriched category approach, you could take a, a modified internal category approach. And that was done by Boroni uh, to some extent. So you are inside a category, no longer in sets, in a category with pullbacks. And you have an, an object of objects, an object of arrows. You built from this with uh, a domain function and a co-domain function. The, object of composable arrows. And the only thing that you have to remember is that the domain function uh, doesn't go to the object of objects, but to, to T of that. Uh, and uh, then you have as a structure, you have composition arrow and insertion of identity arrows and morphisms come with an object part and a morphism part. And then you get Boroni's T categories. Now, if you take inside this, the, um, the full subcategory of those structures where the pair D0, C0 is jointly monic, then we have what we would call then order T categories or better T orders. And it is in that environment that we can compare this with the enriched, uh, monad quantile enriched um, uh, world. I would also say here, the traditional eilenberg moore algebras are inside cat T of course, or even inside or T as those for which 
A1 is precisely TA0 and T0 is the identity function. So you have the algebraic world here, you have the more topological world here, categories lives here, and everything is over C. Uh, uh, and the challenge now is really to compare or T with the TV category approach. This works well in the case V equals two, but hell breaks loose when you go to other Vs. So it's not even clear that V cut, for instance, is expressible as or T. In fact, it is not. Uh, there was a glimmer of hope saying, okay, we can maybe, and this is true, TV cat preside, uh, uh, present as pi two cat, where pi is a monad that sort of uh, entails both T and V, but the extension we need is not a la bar. And uh, so this is a dead end road. On the other hand, we have lots of leads that there are good comparisons between the two approaches. They will be partial, but there are also many unanswered questions. And the most pressing one that I have been raising uh, right from the beginning and everybody would probably do, uh, is every topological category of a set of the form TV cat? I don't know, I'm embarrassed, I don't know. And uh, let me stop here and uh, just uh, leave you with a list of uh, uh, references. They are very incomplete. There are many other references that have helped us uh, a lot uh, in developing the theory. Well, thank you very much. Great, thanks, Walter. So everyone can unmute and uh, clap verbally or audibly. <laughs> And then um, we have time for some questions. So uh, does anyone, if anybody out there has questions, just either raise your hand or just unmute and ask. So I have um, one small question, um, which is quite vague, um, but it's just, I know that in real algebraic geometry, at least ultra filters are, have been studied, you know, and, and tell some kind of interesting story. Have you thought at all about any of applications of this topology to kind of algebraic geometry setting of topology or not? Uh, not specifically to algebraic geometry. Of course, uh, uh, I'm aware of the fact that Jakob Lurie uh, uses ultra categories, um, has a notion of ultra category. Um, and I, I cannot say too much of it, but uh, uh, one thing I would observe is that uh, it is good to first study Manus, and he uses this implicitly with, without uh, uh, mentioning it. Um, ultra products play a big role now in that, that notion. That doesn't come up in this way. With, um, with Manuel Clementino, uh, we have this paper uh, where we first talk about this TV categories. And in, in, in that paper, our V is not just a quantile, but an arbitrary symmetric monoidal closed category. And um, so we, um, we um, deal with the question of how to extend from such a symmetric monoidal closed category, a given set monad to, uh, uh, to v, v relations. Um, and that, that is uh, quite involved. We do have um, a notion of ultra category in there um, that, that uh, results from this extension and it's different from Lurie's work and the direction is totally different. But um, I, I appreciate your question because I think there is uh, a lot of potential at this 
level if you go beyond quantiles. Quantiles is, is a sort of uh, um, uh, simplified world where, where all coherence goes away and so on. But I tell you, you have to work a lot harder when you go beyond that level. And uh, I can well mention that there are, there are good applications also in algebraic uh, geometry, but uh, this is work to be done. Okay, that's great. thank you. No, that's a great answer. Thank you. Okay, it looks like um, Valeria has a question. Yeah, good morning. Hi, hi Valeria. Hi, Walter. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. Nice to see you. Uh, I think I have a question that's a little bit um, more in the direction of the set theory because, you know, your, your slide 28 has taken off theorem, and we know that that is equivalent. Um, to the axiom of choice. So you, you mentioned earlier on, I, and of course I know that you're dealing with kind of um, with the axiom of choice all the time because dealing with uh, ultra filters, they are built, you know, that's one of the reasons why some people don't like ultra filters very much, right? Because they bring in this stuff. So I think the question was, um, if you wanted to go less axiom of choice C or less Z ZFC, but more ZF, what would you do? Can, can you do some of those adjunctions and some of, of, of this of this beautiful things without banging in AC from the beginning? Right. Um, well, I, a, a snappy answer would be, I would study local theory. <laughs> But, but this, of course, I, I don't want to because I want to advertise um, this stuff. Uh, but it is not avoidable to have axiom of choice if you talk to kind of theorem and you, you, you said that. And um, um, in, the, in the book um, on monoidal topology that, uh, yeah, that is here, uh, we have sort of taken the approach that whenever um, the axiom of choice comes in, we have uh, put in Bourbaki style uh, a margin a sign on the, uh, on, in the margin to indicate that we use it. Um, but whether you, whether you take um, the approach with convergence or with neighborhoods, uh, Tikhonov requires your choice, and every general topology book is full of choice. Um, that is unfortunately a fact of life. But in that book, we were a little bit more careful and going a little bit more towards your direction. Uh, uh, so when it comes, I mentioned complete distributivity, and uh, there is the uh, wood style. Uh, version of uh, constructive complete distributivity. And there are instances that you can get by by uh, with, with complete distributivity, uh, with constructive complete distributivity that doesn't use choice. And, um, but for the Tikhonov theorem, you need also in our setting, not surprisingly, the choice dependent full complete distributivity. And in fact, uh, whatever we have is, is equivalent to that. All right, but that's still, that's still a bit less than full AC then. Depend, uh, dependent choice is still apparently no, less. I think, I think in the Trigonov theorem, you need- Everything. The full- The full, uh, the full AC, yeah. I, that's what I heard. It, it's equivalent. Thank you very much. I did not know about Wood's uh, constructive distributivity. That's yeah, there, there is, um, he has nice uh, articles uh, also to the, as you know, with, with Rose Pro. And in particular, there is uh, this book on categorical foundations where he has the first chapter and it explains very nice uh, order theory in a topos and in particular, this concept of complete distributivity. It's, it's really good. Many thanks. Well done. That, uh, that's, that's good. That's great. Thanks a lot. 
Yeah, I have uh, another quick question. Um, well, maybe it's not quick. Um, so I, I really like this uh, category called poly, which is the, the free, dis completely distributive category on a single object. And if I was going to use um, TV categories in, in where I replace the quantile with this, this thing, this monoidal uh, closed category poly, um, what would you suggest to replace the ultra filter monad to kind of get a get a, get going on? <laughs> As you said, it's quite complicated, I suppose. But what would I even try to begin with? Would you suggest? Well, so um, the the standard thing is is really trying to mimic the bar extension. Uh, it has by far the, the best properties. And um, in this paper with, with Clementino, even if we go to V all sets, it always boils down to sort of tabulating somehow a span, no matter how um, rich the structure around is. And uh, being able to, to have this uh, this bar extension in, in some sense, in some general sense, that would be my, my first uh, approach. Okay, great, thanks. You know, the, the, I should say the, the Lux extensions that I presented here, they go back to Gavin Seal, who modified our first thing. So the, the main feature is there that if you uh, uh, apply the extension onto the graph of a function, you um, you extend things potentially compared to uh, applying the functor first to the set and then taking the graph. And the reason why this is relevant is that in that setting, one can prove that you can replace ultra filters by filters. So you use the same axioms that I had just for filters. And it gives you, again, precisely topological spaces in if you, if you take filters instead of ultra filters. It's quite a remarkable result. Uh, the proof is, is, is much longer, um, but uh, it, it, it's a sort of a singular result. It doesn't extend well into other environments uh, if you take other quantiles, but the two chain. I see. That's so if I take the com completely distributive post set on one element, I get the two chain, and then filters are maps into that op, right? Or yeah, yeah. Right. So I could I could try to do that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So maybe we should end here and thank Walter again. And uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so we will end the live stream. And um, sometimes people have a few extra questions that they don't want to ask uh, in public. I don't know. If